Oh, that's not meant to happen. Hi, my name's Johnny, and today we are talking about the 2022 Squire Contemporary P Base. Oh boy, strap yourself in everybody because it's gonna be a bumpy ride. If you have watched my channel before or even searched up about this base, you might have seen one of my previous videos on this very base. This is actually the third, the third Squire Contemporary P base that I have had. And I'll dive into that story in a little bit. First of all, why don't you go ahead and hint that hint 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 to you why don't you go ahead and hit that subscribe button it'll really help me out we are so close to 10,000 subscribers at which point i will be giving away a base so go up in the cards check out that video etc and yeah get involved so announced and released in 2022 the contemporary series is like a modern take on squires or fenders classic looking shapes all still made out of indonesia these are at a slightly higher price point of around 400 pounds at time of recording and offer all sorts of features we've got active preamps a ph configuration yes single coil and a humbucker in the bridge roasted maple neck painted headstock i absolutely love the way that this base looks it's so good and that's one of the only benefits of this base <laughs> let's get into it so gather around children because it is story time i first bought this base it arrived in the post i was super excited filmed my unboxing and it didn't work. It sounded like the battery was dying, but it was fully charged. I put a new battery in there, it was fine. Just getting this low, farty, fuzzy noise. So I sent it back to the retailer, and just for my own curiosity, I said, oh, could you, could you send me one in the other finish, maybe? They obliged, sent me out a new one, and the same issue. Um, then I had alarm bells going off, like, oh, Dear, like this is not good at all for Squire. I've been kind of saying over the last couple of years that they need to up their game in quality control because there are uh, brands like Harley Benton and Sire, you know, snapping at the heels, stealing away that customer base and they're kind of losing their reputation a little bit. So I was so, so disappointed when this happened. Um, and, and at that point I thought, you know what, I'm going to send it back. I, I don't want to waste the energy on this anymore. I thought it was fine when I had it, didn't love it, you know, so I wasn't, wasn't too faced and I just, I thought I'm done here. I'm, I'm out, I'm done. So I sent it back and got a full refund. Fast forward about a month later and I get a notification on my phone. Hmm, it's a DM from Fender. <laughs> so I got a DM from the official Fender account saying, Hi Johnny, we've seen your video and we can't apologise enough, we'd like to rectify this, we'd like to send you a, a free one. <laughs> so I thought, trying to butter me up are you with your free base? Yeah, go on then, it's a free base. <laughs> Don't tell me you wouldn't. So I gave them my address and a week later, here it is. Now of course I was very cheeky in here and did ask, can I try the five string? And which they kind, very kindly obliged. Of course the five string is slightly more expensive than the four string. I do another unboxing of that, open it up, oh yes it works, amazing and oh my god. There's a massive ding right in the lacquer, right where your arm goes. It looked like some transport damage, but if I'm honest, looking over the base itself, it didn't look in that good condition. And I was concerned, like, has this been used? Has this been sent back and they're just resent out to me because it's a free one? Ah, he won't care, it's a free one, what's he gonna do? So I thought I would reach out to Vendor uh, just to let them know. I sent the rep that I was talking to an email just saying, Thank you so much, it's arrived. Can confirm that this one does work. 
um, but there has been some damage and there was no mark on the box. So is it transport damage? Uh, they very, very quickly came back and said, oh my gosh, we're so sorry. And confirmed that that would have been in transit. And I said to them, look, I don't want to waste the energy, the time, and somebody else getting disappointed, or maybe the base going in the bin if it got sent back. It works, I don't care about aesthetics, it was free for me, that's fine. I, I'm gonna keep it, I'll keep it. I don't, I don't want another one, you know. Don't send me out another one. Um, so they said, look, fully, fully respect that you don't want to waste the energy, etc. Um, but we'd still like to make it up to you. So why don't you come down to our showroom in London, have a tour and pick up the brand new one. <laughs> Blown away and, and so happy that the Fender are being so accommodating. So I'm yet to book in my trip, but I'm hoping that I can vlog my time whilst I'm there and hopefully try out some guitars whilst I'm there. Who knows? I'm really excited nonetheless. So that is story time over. Let's jump into the review of this bass. I'm not gonna talk too much about the specs themselves. You can check that out in the link in the description. All of the sound clips you're about to hear are through the Line 6 HX Stomp with an Aguilar Tone Hammer head, the Ampeg SVT 8x10 cap.
It's one of these weird situations where I don't really like five string P basses. I don't really like active P basses. <laughs> this is the perfect bass for me. My favorite sound is having both the pickups blended together. There is a little notch in the middle of the knob to let you know that when you're in that middle position. And one thing that I think is great about this control setup is that you have that master tone. Not all active basses have that feature. And for this to be like a P bass, I think it's good to have that. I'm gonna hit pause on the video right there because Listening back to this when editing, I kind of, my opinion on the sound of this bass has kind of changed a, a little bit. I kind of feel like the preamp is what lets this bass down um, and the pots as well. When you're turning it between like 0 and 50, there doesn't seem to be much difference at all. Um, and then the difference all comes when you go from 50 to 100. There's all of a sudden a lot of, a lot of change. And now I don't think it's like, loads of treble and loads of bass like you sometimes get in affordable preamps but I just don't feel like this preamp is doing it any favours. I liked it when it was quite modest. I preferred it when it was not boosted at all. I thought that's how you got the most clarity out of the pickups and that's when they sounded best so I think maybe a preamp change would do this bass some good. Oh, and, uh, and it's, uh, it's funny I say that because I've uh, I've got a little preamp here that I might be putting in there. <laughs> You'll have to subscribe and find out. Now, when you've got an affordable five string, you're wondering, uh, what's that low B like? And can confirm, it's good. It's good. It, it feels pretty tight. It's not too floppy. Overall, I think this bass plays pretty nicely. Now, I say pretty nicely because there is a, there is a but with that because it plays nicely on the fretboard on the back of the neck god is it dry visibly dry as well let me let me show you i'm hoping you can see it on this camera if not i will get some other footage of it you see here where it's like got this weird figuring it's just super dry and up around here as well so it's not the nicest feeling now i want to talk a bit about quality control now because if i'm honest i think that is this bass's biggest letdown i mean with the gash that was out of here it was spiky around the lacquer you would have cut yourself open if you're putting your arm across that so luckily i had the tools to kind of sand it down and uh, make it a little bit more presentable. I actually really love the way that that looks on the bass now. However, that's not the only bit. There's a slight ding at the base of the neck. There's a nick at the top of the headstock. There's a little scratch on the back and the knobs mostly feel fine apart from the bass control, which has got that weird problem where it feels like it's sticking against something and you've got to really it feels horrible when you turn it. It's like fine, 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 oh, 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 fine. So like if you want it anywhere in, in this region, it's a bit difficult to get it there or get it consistently there because it is so sticky feeling. So yeah, don't love that. And one more thing, the fret edges on this are perfect. There's no problem with those whatsoever. So overall, I can't say I'd recommend getting one of these. The quality control, as evidented three times, not great. 
or if you are interested in buying one and you're really sold on this, definitely try it out in a shop first. Like I said before, make sure you hit that subscribe button because in a few weeks, we have the brand new 40th anniversary vintage P-Base arriving. So I'm so excited to do a review on that one. Once again, I wanna say a big thank you to Fender for being so accommodating and kind. And please don't hate me for this video. <laughs> I just gotta be honest, you know, like it's not quite up to scratch with this one, but I appreciate the free bass nonetheless. Once again, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.